Building a great company is a marathon, not a sprint. Each week, Krista Inkeman and the team at Tank New Media take on growth challenges, explore technology, and interview business leaders that are always upping their game. If you're ready to build scalable systems to drive your business forward, this podcast is for you. Hi, everyone. Today, we are welcoming back Lenny Stahl, the CEO of Dakota Storage Buildings. And we're going to be discussing how his leadership style has shifted over the years and how that's affected his business overall. Welcome back, Lenny. Thank you. Tell me a little bit, because I feel like kind of maybe your leadership style has kind of changed a little bit over the years. Do you want to just talk a little bit about kind of where you're at now? About three, four years ago, there was a friend of mine out of Pennsylvania. I encouraged me to listen to Michael Hyatt. And Michael Hyatt at that time, his, he spoke, uh, I think he still does, on uh, intentional leadership. Mm-hmm. And I started listening to him. There were things that he was talking about, about being intentional. Just though the word servant leadership was a foreign concept to me. I was kind of, uh, how do you call it, uh, extremely, from my background, top down, a lot of tyranny, it's do this or else. And sure. that's kind of how I was living life and leading, quote. And that wasn't working. Things around me were not working. I'm like, what are those companies doing? There is something wrong with what is being coming out of what I'm doing. There is something more to this whole culture thing. Mm-hmm. And when he recommended me, Michael Hyatt, for Michael Hyatt, it was, I just continually kept, what is this? Asking more questions, reading more books, listening to more podcasts. And then about a year, two years ago, there was, I had a, and it was another company that came in that we do business with. And they came in and did a seminar for us on Patrick Lencioni, the five dysfunctions of a team. Mm-hmm. And it was a very interesting seminar that they did for us. They did it one in Spanish, one in English. And I realized that day that I had a lot of bad paradigms, and I still do. For an example, somebody shows up late. I have very low tolerance when somebody shows up late. Sure. Well, he gave a case in point. You see an employee pull in, he's late. And then you all of a sudden jump on it, jump on him or her, but you have no idea why they were late. They might have just have gotten word their grandma is dying of cancer. Sure. You don't know. There's a lot of story you don't know. Yeah. There's a lot of the story you don't know. Why is somebody chronically late or continually late? I would just yeah. lash instead of what is going on here, seeking first to understand sure. then to be understood. I had no concept of that. And so I signed, and and as he was doing that seminar, he told me that he is personally going through an online course by Triune Leadership Services, which is out of Alexandria, Minnesota. And he wrote, the guy wrote a book called Leading Jesus Way. It's basically taking a leadership model Mm -hmm. from the master of leader, which is Jesus. And I said, you know what? I've been asking so many other questions. What's another question? So I, what is this? Signed up for it. And I thought it was his own line thing, just videos you watch, a book you read, and then and, and questions you fill out. But then here he ends up calling me. I'm like, oh, oh. whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and he said, welcome. I, I really appreciate you signing up. We are actually, every Thursday, we have a roundtable discussion. There's people from all over the country that call in. And uh, I'm like, ah, no, 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 uh-uh, no. <laughs> I'm not doing I- that. <laughs> I'll just do the online thing. But then he called me again and said, hey, we really would like your participation in this. Just call in. And I did. And it was just fascinating to me. Going, that was, that, I would say going through that nine-week course was a life changer for me. My view on people changed. Hmm. It was like, People do matter. It's if we don't work on building our people, it, forget it, it. It's not going to work. Sure. We create a very toxic culture environment. 
if people do not matter, and, and from that time on, I have made a lot of investment personally into people matter, living for the greater good of someone else. Sure. It, it revolutionized in how I relate to my wife, my children, my vendors. I used to have vendors that tell me, well, you cannot make a dime on Lenny. There is no loyalty. And I was feeling pretty proud of myself. I'm a ruthless negotiator. Sure. But that when my paradigm changed, that's actually an embarrassment today. Sure. If your vendors say this about you, that's a problem. Sure. And I had one vendor in the last six months tell me, you're, you're told your worldview has changed in how you even relate to me. Mm-hmm. And I've come to realize people matter if they're employees, if they're vendors, or if they're your customers. That is one thing in all the learning and all the reading that I did where Dr. Cuddy said a, a company's mission statement must address four quadrants. Employee, the vendor, the customer, and the investor. Sure. If those four quadrants are not addressed in how you conduct business, it's not going to work. So that's in one aspect. It's a long answer to your short question. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's perfect. That's perfect. I mean, do you feel like once you kind of made this mental shift, you saw changes in your business? Yes. I actually saw drama go down. When you're clear about your direction, mm-hmm. your purpose, and your vision, you will have people leave. You will have people change their own paradigm. It has helped us address issues with more clarity, with more expectation. It, 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 I'd say drama has gone down tremendously. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't know how else. I'm so new into this. Vendors tend to change. Customers tend to change. The people you associate with tends to change. When you get a vision and you're clear about your purpose and your values, there's shifting going on. Mm-hmm. I would say a lot less drama, a lot less toxicity. Mm-hmm. Do, is, it, is, is, is it a destination? No, it's a journey. Sure. But hopefully everybody's With, moving in the right direction, in the same direction correct. now. Correct. That's kind of what it sounds like. And, and, and if they're not, we have conversations. Sure. We used to never have conversations with with uh, employees. You didn't do this, 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 out, go. Yep. Well, why didn't they do that? High likelihood it's failed leadership on my end. Sure. Sure. It's uh, We're having a lot, hard, lot more conversations and clearer conversations, not dealing with problems in a passive aggressive way. Sure. Sure. That makes sense. Healthier environment overall when you can kind of open up and talk about Correct. the challenges that are in front of you and solve them, hopefully. Correct. Yeah. Do we still have a long way to go? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. My, my business coach, who is also the guy who wrote the book, Leading Jesus Way, mm-hmm. said that you will have a three to five year paradigm shift. We're going into the second year. It takes wow. three to five years to change culture. Wow. And he's always asked me the question, why aren't there more servant leaders? There's a lot of buzz. It is the most difficult thing Chris I ever did. Really? It is a lot easier to run a company with policies, procedures, but you know what? You get hands, but you don't get minds. You don't sure. get hearts. You do, it's a waste of people yeah. when you do that. It is difficult. It is the, one of the most difficult things that I ever, uh, ever did. I wouldn't change it for nothing. Yeah, you do it again. I have grown to work down, to slow down and treat people like people and not like machines and to sit and listen to one to a fellow sob story, to give him a word of encouragement. You know, there is light at the end of the tunnel to to try to be patient with somebody who is a museum of bad decisions. (laughs) It is difficult. Yeah. But we are here to set the greater good of our people, yeah. not, for our, not, to, not to expand our own wallet. In return, yeah. when you develop people, you develop your assets as well. Yeah, absolutely. So you've been in the CEO role for about two years, roughly about now. Is that about right? A year and a half. 
Um, what do you feel like are some of the biggest challenges you've had as you've kind of taken this seat? It was actually a good question. I was discussing it with one of my partners on the way to Sioux Falls on Friday or Saturday last week. I said the biggest challenge I would have had is to shift from a general manager's mindset to an owner CEO mindset. And I feel like I have a long way to go. Sure. I have for 16 years, I was a general manager. And general managers think different than owners. Those two things are not the same. And it has probably been the hardest thing for me is to look at business from a different perspective. Mm. I'm, still, I'm still finding that I, analyze, I do too much analysis from a general manager's mindset, not from an owner-CEO mindset, from a vision mindset. Okay, so just looking at it, kind of taking the big picture in more yeah. than the details? Correct. You're kind of thinking about? It, it, is, it has been a battle. I, and I'm trying to surround myself with people who fill in the gaps that I just, I, I'm realizing I'm not good at. Sure, sure. What do you what do you feel like your biggest successes have been? What are you really proud of? The call the the, the 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 beginning the journey of culture change. Sure, sure. So kind of just make starting that down that path. Starting that that because of what it's done to me, and what it's done to the people around me. The compliments I hear and saying good job, great direction. Uh, I just did a three sixty degree review. There were a lot of positive things. But right next to my positive things are also my weaknesses. Sure. I'd say that. Yeah. If there's no person, personal development, it's probably, and even seeing the changes brought into some of my, my closest staff. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So I know just because in the time that we talk together, you've got kind of a, a lot of different things going on within Dakota right now. Um, one of those is you're, you're working on implementing lean within your organization. Do you want to just kind of Give kind of an overview on that and how that's going. It, again, uh, with Lean, from the little bit we've dabbled or started implementing, with that comes also a paradigm shift, a different way of thinking versus, for an example, we had an incredible good push system, which you overproduce in one segment of the manufacturing process, but underproduce on the other end. Mm -hmm. So changing from a push to a pull system where the product going out the other end controls the flow, not the beginning end. So the incredible paradigm shifting it takes there has been a challenge. However, the concept of lean manufacturing is very, very fascinating. It is, it is pretty much continuous improvement. It's actually one of our values at Dakota is never being satisfied with the status quo. And the reason we got introduced to lean is up in our area here in Northeast South Dakota, we have a labor epidemic. It is unreal, the labor shortage, the job openings, mm -hmm. and the challenge. So I was visiting with Kristen Drissler. Mm -hmm. I think, believe she's also one of your clients yep. from Team Recruiting out of New Holland, PA, or wherever she's from, somewhere mm -hmm. in PA. And she suggested you should seriously take a look at lean. And I'm like, what in the world is that? So I went to Wikipedia, started researching what lean is, and she got in touch with me and a consultant. And we started visiting, had about a two hour meeting and, and pretty much lean is eliminating wastes every step of the process where you're eliminating waste in your people, Having them do something they're not gifted in, waste in inventory, waste in material, waste in time, and stuff like that. So we have started the journey. And again, it's not a destination. It is mm -hmm. a journey. And the challenge has been, it's like right behind me, you'll see the whole <laughs> yep. deal. It's been the paradigm shifting and getting people who are used to doing stuff a certain way for the last how many years and getting them to think differently about manufacturing. Sure, sure. Is it really kind of in your employees' mindset, like just getting, like thinking about doing their job differently? Yes, that has been the biggest challenge is to get them to, when you've had a culture for push, 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 go, 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 move, move, move. 
Yeah. To actually get them to slow down, think about the process. How can this be done different? How can I eliminate the waste out of this? It, it takes, it takes a, it, it, again, it takes a cultural change. It takes a paradigm shift. Sure, sure. And one of the things is, since we've implemented Lean, again, it's a lot less chaos. Our factory is a lot, it's not as full. We actually are down three or four people and we're still pretty much producing the same thing. Oh, wow. Just by going from a push system to a pull. Less chaos, less congestion. The other thing that, one of the things that we have found is we have been very bad in cross-training people. Mm. And one of the ways to make lean more effective is to have people cross-trained. And it boils back to some people don't want to be cross-trained. It's a cultural issue. Yeah. They just want to do the one thing. And That's right. Not worry and, about and it. Some, yeah, and some people are gifted in doing that. And, and that's fine. But as a whole, we're going to put more emphasis again on the cultural shift. Sure. So tell me a little bit about what, what can we expect to see in the next few years from Dakota? How, would, how do you feel like the company is going to kind of develop and change? That is a good question, Krista. <laughs> a very thought-provoking qu uh, question. I haven't stumped you yet this morning. <laughs> Where I, I think you will see more change is in trying to uh, push harder into the lean manufacturing. Sure. We're actually, as I'm speaking of that, is we're actually having our lean consultant come back in in November 14th and 15th to look at our office processes. Where can we implement lean from an office standpoint? Wow. What is the current state and where do we want to go? My, uh, the other thing that I'd like to expand our product line, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I would like to increase production and continue to increase our footprint in the markets that we serve. Sure. I, I still feel strongly that too many people accidentally stumble across Dakota. I'll be happy when we're a household yeah. name. Be more intentional. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a great goal. That's a great goal to have. So because I know you so well, I know you're always reading and following people. Do you have any uh, latest recommendations you'd give out to any other uh, manufacturing leaders to read? Actually, yes. It's called the No Complaining Rule. Ooh, I like that. What's his name? John Gordon, I believe it's the no complaining rule.com. He wrote the book, a no complaining rule. <laughs> and then also I just, I got done with that book and now I am reading another book that he wrote, the power of positive culture mm. or something like that. Uh, -huh. uh, I have it in my backpack in my office. Again, it's dealing with the cultural issue. Sure. You cannot let vampire suckers in your company. You sure. cannot allow negativity and complaining and whining and fussing and not deal with it. Sure. So that has been a great inspiration to me. And also to be a little more careful and create a filter what comes out of my mouth. What am I doing that feeds positivity, assertive communication and stuff like that? Absolutely. But when you go back to our values... I believe I'd have to look him up again. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the deals is I bring solutions, not complaints. So we have done that for a while and we have been working on that for a while. I accidentally came across his book, The No Complaining Rule by John. I think it's John Gordon is his sure. name. I accidentally came across it and I shared it with the team. It was just another affirmation to us they as a senior direction. leadership team that we cannot allow chronic complaining. There's a difference between a complaint and bringing a solution than just complaining and whining and moaning mm -hmm. and being about everything that management and all the other coworkers do wrong. Yeah, yeah. I felt like I heard somewhere that, you know, we can't do anything with the complaint. Like people bring you a complaint and you can't, the complaints aren't actionable, you know, but if, right. you have a, if you have a challenge and you have a solution, that's something that can, you can actually do something with. That's right. Yes. Yes. And that's what I, again, Monday morning team meetings, I read over our values. And one of the behaviors behind one of our values is I bring solutions, not complaints. I mm -hmm. keep telling my guys, 
what should I do with a complaint? The reason it is a complaint is nobody knows what to do about it. Yeah. Bring a solution so we can act upon it. Your solution may not necessarily be followed to the T, but you're giving us hints to a greater synergistic solution. Yeah. Or at least you could brainstorm about what a better solution might be if that one, Correct. you know, not going to work. Yes. But, Correct. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for being on today, Lenny. And um, we'll have yeah, not a problem. We'll have a lot of these things in the show notes for anybody who wants to uh, follow up on any of these books for sure. I, I this is actually fun, and uh, I've become very passionate about culture and leadership. And again, I have to keep reminding myself. Like I told one of my guys yesterday, we had we had a discussion with an employee who we gave a performance improvement plan to, and we followed up thirty days later, and and he was lamenting the fact why he has to take such a brunt of a lot of things and his coworker is being slackful mm. or being slacking. And I said, welcome to the world of leadership. <laughs> it's not about authority and carrying a big stick. It's like John Maxwell puts it, serving is influence and influence is leadership. So welcome to my world. <laughs> Thank you. It doesn't feel as lonely anymore. <laughs> For tools and resources, visit manufacturinggrowth.com.